Bodybuilding is not just a sport. It is a way to live one's life, to reach for that moment of perfect symmetry and dimension. Welcome to the Cult of the Body. Bodybuilding is a tremendous thing when you realize that you have a hand, you have the power to create your body the way you want it. Today on stage, you have to be as big as you can be, as muscular as you can be, as ripped as you can be, and as freaky as you can be. I think we're obsessed. Body that we are a little building is not body destruction. If anyone thinks that there's no drugs in all sports, they're living in a vacuum. I am 100% drug free. Bodybuilding gives you power, gives you energy. I really respect these guys that go out there and do it naturally because they've really got to pay attention to their diet and their supplements. And I'll pick poses that are going to make me look bigger than I really am. Because that's what this sport is all about, the sport of illusions. I don't want to sound cocky or anything, but I'm going to go out there expecting a win. Each year, thousands of people from all over the world gather for the ultimate bodybuilding competition, Mr. and Ms. Olympia. The Olympia Expo hawks fitness products and celebrity bodybuilders are on hand to inspire hungry fans. Whether you're a fitness buff or a 98-pound weakling, the Olympia delivers muscle, mass, and mania. This is our Super Bowl bodybuilding and fitness right here. You have to have strong willpower, you have to have strong determination, and you must love what you're doing more than almost anything in the world. With the pros, it's a whole nother ballgame because you're talking about working with the elite athletes in the world, the best. The guys you see at the Olympia are the top 13 or 14 elite athletes in the sport. And when you qualify for the Olympia, you enter the elite group. You have to feel great, and you have to let everybody see that you know you feel great and that you are great. Backstage at the Olympia, athletes pump blood into their muscles, tan and oil their bodies, all in preparation to show off the quality and size of their physiques. Tanning is really one of the things that they're judged on. You've got to understand they have to be really exaggerated tanning. You know, it's not just a normal tan like you and I have. It has to be really, really dark. It makes them glisten and it really just highlights and defines their physique so you can just see their definition. I'm the last person they see before they go up on stage, so it's very important that I make them look their best. They're presenting that total package, therefore I must make sure every body part is completely in view. If there's too much oil in one spot and not enough on another, it's going to take away from their symmetry. It could do nothing but mess up their body, so all that time, effort, money that they put into their contest could be completely axed. A panel of IFBB judges await the start of competition. We judge them for their muscularity, for their symmetry, and their proportions, and their definition. There are seven compulsory poses highlighting arms, legs, abdominals, and back. Each competitor tries to emphasize their strengths and hide their weaknesses. The size in itself won't make you win. The quality of the muscle itself won't make you win. It's a combination with symmetrical development. That's the key. Every part of your body has to be symmetrically developed to the other parts. And they all have to be at their top level. If somebody comes in with a huge, massive chest and massive biceps and shoulders, but they've got weak legs, they're gone. Symmetrical posing is means you show the left and your right side of your body exactly the same way. Then we do a comparison where we put two or three fellows together. That's really where you can really get down to the nitty gritty. Because everybody looks good by herself. At this level, these guys are all champions. So when you see them by themselves, you're gonna say, wow, this guy's great, this guy. You put them together next to each other and that's where you decide who's first, who's second, who's third. What goes on in the pose down, it's a culmination of all three rounds and it's the athletes trying to outdo one another. So if one guy does a pose, the other guy's saying, look, I can do it better. And he's trying to prove to the judges, I'm better than this guy. The pose down is where the bodybuilder's charisma and confidence shines through. It is a free-for-all, and the audience loves it. The three-time 
time Olympia champion, Ronnie Coleman. The Olympia purse is $435,000 unevenly split between the men and women. Top prize is $30,000 for the women split between two weight classes. $110,000 for the men, winner takes all. Prize money aside, to win the Olympia is the brass ring that promises product endorsements, guest posings, and supplement support. It really takes discipline to, to make it to the top in anything, and especially bodybuilding, because it's not like the training takes all day, but you're involved with your body all day. Bodybuilding is, is made up of three th stages. One is a competitive sport. Two is a lifestyle. And three is an art. Training begins at the gym. Gold's Gym in Venice Beach, California is considered the mecca of bodybuilding. Whether you are an amateur or a pro, the goal is to become ripped and shredded, to see the physiology and shape of the muscle through the skin. For some people, no matter how hard they train, if they do not have the proper genetics, they will never achieve the desired look. Genetics, you have to have proper skeletal system. They gotta have wide shoulders, they gotta have narrow waist, hips, they gotta be in proportion. See, what I'm doing is shoulders or delts. And the reason I wrap the dumbbells with these is because I can't really grip the weight during the course of the exercise because the weight gets pretty heavy on my hands. Bodybuilder Craig Titus has been training for 11 years, eight of which has been geared towards becoming a professional athlete. Because I'm dieting, I'm just uh, burning interstitial fat out of my muscle, shaping my muscle, and uh, creating a look that I need for stage rather than trying to build, so I lighten the weight to avoid injury. See, that got heavy. That got heavy as hell. The idea is to sculpt your muscles to fit your skeletal frame, to have the least amount of body fat in proportion to actual muscle size. Heavier weight creates more mass. Less weight with increased repetitions creates more definition. This past year was the biggest I've ever gotten. I was 274, I'm five foot nine. I still have to put another 15 pounds of muscle on. The amateurs, I mean, they're just so hungry because they want to get to where, you know, like the Ronnie Coleman's and the Flex Wheelers and the Chris Cormier's and the Nasser's and all these, you know, the guys that they're idolizing in the magazine. Amateur bodybuilder Travis Wojek trains alongside the pros. At age 20, he is just entering the sport on a competitive level as a natural bodybuilder. It's a tough thing coming into the bodybuilding world because everybody tells you what you should be doing and coming in, especially as an amateur and as a beginner, you have to realize that everybody's an expert. Everybody's an expert on their own body and you have to find what works good for you. This exercise here is one of the greatest isolation bicep workouts with the elbow against the leg, keeps it in a position where it's always tensed. So the veins coming out real nicely here means they like this exercise. <laughs> Across town, Stan McQuay starts his day at the gym. Trying to wake up. Like Travis, Stan is a natural bodybuilder. After attaining three black belts in the martial arts, Stan has been building muscle for 10 years. This year, he turns pro. Bodybuilding is definitely growing in, in the aspect of different types of people. Come on, wake up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, especially now that the natural shows are coming up, you don't have to be a freak anymore and they can see that, hey, we can just take natural supplements and uh, compete. I'm not trying to get big and huge, you know. I try to stay uh, nice and symmetrical, still pleasing to the average person so that when they come to a competition, they can actually say, I'd like to look like that. And it is easily obtainable. Not easily, but it is obtainable. I see definitely a push for natural bodybuilding. I see guys that are training in the gym, they want to look cut, they want to look muscular, but they don't want to look huge. First of all, it's the hardest sport in the world to turn pro at. When you're professional, you can make money at it. And when you're amateur, you don't. Basically, the difference is when you become a professional bodybuilder, you get paid for absolutely everything you do. Photo shoots, magazine covers, endorsements, guest posing seminars, guest speaking, and even your prize money. And in an amateur, you don't get paid prize money.